Go, go Astros, a focus on H-Town Hardball. Let me sync that up. So, yeah, we're going to do about 10 minutes. I want you guys to get – we're not going to talk Carlos because um, it's just depressing. Um, yeah. but, no, we can't think that way. We have to think positive, and I don't want to hear anything besides the positive, yeah, even if well, it is denial. Fortunately, this episode is our opening – like we're pretending like it's already opening day. So whether he was going to sign or not, it would have already happened. Yeah. I think that they're going to figure something out. I just don't think it's going to be as big as everyone thinks. I think, you know, I think if they get in for 250, they'll do it. Um, but, yeah, so, uh, again, Michelle, thanks for jumping on the show. Um, just a little bit about our show. We are mostly not an MLB show. Um, we do have an Astro segment because I'm born and raised in Houston, pretty much grew up in the Astrodome. Um, but mostly we do minor league baseball and collegiate summer league stuff. But I like to have Rob on every now and again to help promote your show. So here you guys are. Wonderful. Well, yeah, Rob is the man. Um, <laughs> ooh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I don't yeah. know what to throw up. Okay. So we'll, we'll jump into it. Um, we are recording on the main camera. Sound check is good. And we are super excited to welcome to the Go Go Astros segment of Let's Get To. And we have a much better uh, Astros podcast than what we're able to do. We've got Michelle and Rob from Astros Baseball. How are you guys doing? Happy opening day. I, it's exciting. It's like, right. It's Go exciting. Ahead. Words out of my mouth, buddy. It is. Opening day is like this. And, and you know, and, and I, I, I assume we all feel better about this one compared, certainly compared to the last one. That's yeah. Really it should be a mm. holiday. Um, I'm treating it like a holiday. This is honestly like Christmas morning for me pretty much for the next nine months. I mean, I'm feeling, I mean, besides like the vaccine side effects, feeling A+. plus. Are you, are you riding the Moderna Dragon today? oh <laughs> uh, yeah it's yeah. like a bumpy ride it makes you so sleepy but i mean i felt hung hung over when i got it yeah that's yeah. what i feel like for the past two days i felt like yeah. but i'm excited regardless nothing can dampen my pure joy for the houston astros and baseball season so let's jump into that then so it is a team that i think most people think will be very good and i think um there are some question marks, and I think that in, in, I think there's a lot of maybe question marks, wrong word, uncertainty. Like if certain things repeat, then I think things will be perfect. Um, Michelle, real quick, we'll jump in with you. What are two reasons in your head that you think there's another parade through downtown Houston in October? Well, I mean, I can't even, I don't know if it's, it's like this intangible, indescribable feeling, but um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna make a wild prediction and say that uh, because Justin Verlander is part superhuman, he'll be back to pitch. And when that happens, it is over for everyone. Like goodbye <laughs> chances for the White Sox, goodbye everyone else. Take like all the mediocres can take their seats. That's like, we're going to see the, re I, I fully believe we'll see the return of Verlander. And we have a, a stupid good uh, offense from top to bottom. I mean, Jordan Alvarez, we see his return. We have Michael Brantley re-signed. Those are just two off the top of my head. Rob knows I could go on and on and on about why, but we will. Period. End of story. We got some unfinished business. Rob, what about you then? What are, what are some things that you look at this team and you go, all right, I, I, I can see it happening? You look at the lineup, like she said, top to bottom. I mean, you get to the seven hole and you got Yuli Gurriel. I mean, if he can bounce back, you got Yuli Gurriel batting seventh. And then you got Martin Maldonado, who can hit a home run at a moment's notice. And Miles Strong, which I expect big things from in the nine hole. I mean, we're not, I mean, every, of course you're going to miss Springer, but sure. I think Altuve is going to be back. Altuve will have 200 hits guaranteed. And then you look at the pitching staff. I mean, we don't have Verlander, like she said, but we got Grinky, you know, the wild man. We've got Oda Rizzi. We just signed him. I, yeah. that, that guy's a professional. Um, 
uh, Framber Valdez. Favorite. He doesn't have to have surgery. Yeah, so, and Michelle, think about that real quick. Framber Valdez doesn't need surgery. How big is that for the Astros? That's big. Um, I think it's kind of insane. I think I mentioned this on uh, one of the last episodes of our show that um, it's insane that they were mentioning surgery in the first place because, you know, uh, the just from like somebody who is like an anatomy student that's it's a the meta like the the bones in your fingers those injuries usually only take three to four weeks to recover I think they were probably saying surgery in case it had uh, affected any areas around the hand but it's it's huge it's a big deal because we need that like we need him in our rotation he came correct last season he was deadly on the mound yeah and i know that he's got that mindset he's got that determined resilient mindset and he just wants to win like we all want the same thing we want to see a world series brought back to houston so we can silence all of the naysayers it's almost like they signed Oda rizzi to replace him because they thought they were going to be he was going to be out and now we're going to have both of them plus Greenkey, plus Lance McCullers Jr., who was amazing last year. I mean, is that not a rotation that's going to win it all right there? It is. And and you know, the the name everybody sleeps on is Urquidy. Nobody's talking about him. And this is going to be the first year where he's truly fully healthy and ready to pitch. Because you remember, he was still being pitch limited into last year as a recovery from his Tommy John. How big is Jose Urquidy going to be for the team? Big. He just threw five five perfect innings. Yeah. And, a, and, a, and a spring training game. He's got his pet pig. What else do you want? I forgot about him. I'm sleeping on him. But he, Jose Urquidy's awesome. We're, I forgot about him. And that's how good we are. We're so good, you can't even remember everybody. I mean, his, deb- his debut was at Coors Field like in the Rockies game back in 2019. His debut was in, and he threw – just like he do exactly what we like he did exactly what we needed him to he was solid and that's one of the more difficult parts for a pitcher to start off in like it, it, let alone like like he's coming back from a Tommy John like that's insane this guy is so incredibly talented and the fact that he that just speaks to the quality of the Astros and the organization as a whole we're stacked do you think, uh, Michelle, um, I know there's been some question about whether Ryan Presley is really a closer guy or an eighth guy. Do you think he is the closer in September, or do you see somebody like Anoli Paredes maybe getting promoted to that spot? I think that uh, Ryan Presley uh, can certainly – I think that initially uh, I want to – He'll work as a closer. Um, I think that we will see his ability tested throughout the season as far as the postseason goes. I don't have that answer because there's always new and different pieces that emerge. I mean, we haven't even seen Pedro Baez yet. So oh, I forgot about him. And Ryan Stanek. We have Ryan awesome Stanek. Like, like the, see, that's just insane, the level of talent. I think Anoli Paredes is going to – Maybe like he'll might he might come in and function as like a reliever or like an uh, like an innings eater or maybe even the setup guy. He might be the setup to Ryan Presley's closer. Uh, those are two. That's a very likely scenario. But again, like I can't predict the future. As you know, baseball is insane and yeah. uh, the baseball gods love chaos. So, um, Rob, you brought up Miles Straw, and you think he's going to have a big season. I think that uh, what I love about Miles Straw is he plays like. Um, a guy in the 90s when I really grew up really forming my love of this game. What gives you confidence that Miles is going to be the guy sort of at the top of the order by the time it flips around and gives uh, the the opportunity to drive some runs in? What gives you confidence that he's going to be there? I believe – I mean, if you watch him in spring training, you've seen how good he's been. And it's just – I think it's a different mindset to have to sit on the bench all day and – you know all you're going to do is pinch run. To, you know, your role is to go steal bases. But he's a starter now. He's going to play every day. He's going to get all the experience that he needs. And I just think he's a good player. He wouldn't be there. I mean, they would have went out and got somebody else. If they got confidence in him, I got confidence in him. Um, Michelle, let's get a little more um, maybe touchy-feely, romantic about it all. Uh, what are you looking forward to the most about either being back at the ballpark or even just watching a game for real, knowing that the world is starting to feel a little bit more normal? Um, I think it's going to 
I don't know. I feel like my quality of life dramatically improves during baseball season because it's just how can, uh, like whatever, what what movie is it from? How can you not be romantic about oh, baseball? Ball. It's, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's impossible not to be. Um, I think that I'm looking forward to maybe, well, hopefully in October, uh, appearance at Yankee Stadium like in 2019 because those were some wild games but the energy when we won I think it was game four we won electric it, and the like the like the tight little unit like all of the Astros fans formed because we were there's a huge group of us sitting above the visitors bullpen at Yankee Stadium really good vibe it was just I want like I want I miss the energy and the interaction and like the F- familial like bond of Astros fans. Yeah, you know it's funny. Um, I was thinking about all that too, and and I was also thinking about how like these stadiums that are so hostile. You know, Yankee Stadium, um, Oakland. Oh yeah, they're gonna be like everybody's talking about how how much nastier they'll be after the set the fallout of the scandal. And I'm like, they weren't exactly walks in the park in the first place. Like, no. you know. There weren't uh, well, kisses and hugs before. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I know that there was always usually, usually, you know, a sort of a mutual respect, but it wasn't. Guys still got a got a beer can thrown at him while he was at the urinal, which is weird. Um, Rob, what about you though? What are you looking forward to most at, uh, at, at being back? Well, I've already bought tickets, so I'm going. And uh, not, not that I'm scared, you know, but you know, a little. It's it's a little nervous, you know. You haven't been around a lot of people. Restaurants are starting to open but I'm actually in the social distance seats. You know, it's just little pods of four and there's nobody in front of you or behind you. So, uh, but I got a code, you know, I knew I was gonna go to the game, but I got a code in my email. I logged in and I, and I, sit, I sat in the section I wanted to be in anyway, you know, just being the social distance one was an accident. It, it was sure. a, you know, it was a, it was a bonus. That's what I would call it, a bonus. And it's going to be nice not having someone behind me or in front of me. It's going to be pretty good. So what can we look forward to on the show as we go forward? I know that you guys had a week where you had nothing but baller guests. Uh, what can we look forward to as we, as we watch the season through your show? Well, during the off season, like you said, we have guests. We talk about people that write books. You know, anybody that has anything to do with baseball comes on. But when the season starts, it's all Astros, 100%. If you miss a game, if you miss a series, if you miss anything, you can, wa- you can listen to our show because every game will be covered. You will know the stats from every game the entire year. It, this is the place to come if you want to follow the Astros, if you're unable to see some games. And you'll hear honest opinions because we're independents and we're not, we're not affiliated with anybody. And yeah, I, we're not- I am not afraid to say what I got to say. Yeah, Michelle, you too, right? Yeah, which is what I really appreciate about Rob. And um, it's just, uh, I love being on the show with it because we're not tied to any, anyone. Um, we're able to, I mean, we always keep it mostly respectful, uh, but there is like an unfiltered honesty, which I think the listeners uh, can look forward to the season and why we, uh, Rob has been able to build uh, the, uh, uh, listenership like he has well I, t- I told emily nyman who was on the segment right before you she does a yankees podcast and i'll give her i love some- her oh she's the best and, I- and i'll give you guys the same compliment y'all are the best at this um you are the only astros podcast that i listen to sorry to all the other ones <laughs> but we're the best but y'all are the best and i really want you know i wish you nothing but the best and we'll have you guys back on in a couple of months to check in on on the season as it's going you got it. 